welcome back to another week of Art Life. Forgive that this episode is literally being taken on my phone. It's a inspired moment and we have none of the gear with us, but we just can't wait to just make a video while the inspiration strikes, while the muse is there. Um, so basically, I had this epiphany in the car. Um, you might do it too, where you are spending a lot of your time, those free moments in the day, it's probably scrolling on your phone, looking for inspiration, liking things on Instagram, hating the algorithm, feeling like nothing works for you, feeling like you're getting into a little bit of a pit of despair, which I definitely do because I have admitted before, I'm not that good with uh, the whole like like system. I feel like it makes me quite anxious if I post something I'm really proud of and it gets no likes, no traction, the algorithm is against it. I'm like, oh, is it no good? Um, and then I kind of get into a bit of a pit of like imposter syndrome. And I, I sunk into that a bit this week because I haven't been painting every day because uh, like many of you, I have like a young child and I'm running around after him um, or just life gets in the way. You're working on other jobs, you're doing other things, you're teaching, you're whatever you're doing, traveling. I'm sure it keeps you away from the studio where you'd like to be every single day. But then I realized occasionally the algorithm works for me. Something pops up on Instagram or Facebook or uh, just Google search where I see an image that inspires me, a painting, a poem, a quote, something that makes me feel a little bit of hope that the internet actually can be a source of inspiration as well in those moments of the day where you can't be in a library stuck in a pile of books like I used to be or on a beach sketching a big wave or climbing a mountain looking for a Caspar David Friedrich-esque point of sublime you know, landscape. Uh, we're in the day. So this is a very much a video about being in the day. I started scrolling through these screenshots. I didn't realize you could actually search your screenshots on your phone and see what you've been screenshotting. So I did this and there's lots of random screenshots of things I've, photographs I've already taken or um, just nonsense really. But occasionally there's a gem. There's a few photos of paintings in there. I'm like, oh yeah, I remember that was like four months ago and I was in a waiting room of the dentist and I saw that and I screenshot it. Why did I do that? What did I feel like it could be good for? What about that photo made me need to capture it quick before it disappears? Because that's the problem with our social media, I think. Everything is so hungry and instant and fast. If you don't capture it quick, it's gone. Oh, what was that name again? It's completely um, so hungry, this machine of like social media, the internet. It's like there's too much information out there and I think we get lost in it. So I would like to ask you to join me in a little exercise. Pause this video if you must, uh, where you just have a look through your screenshots or your photographs or something. Have you been taking photographs of a page in a book or a magazine? Have you screenshot someone's painting that they did that you loved, an like an archive of a painting from 200 years ago that for some reason means something to you today? Um, you can scroll back. I'm sure I, I had 600 screenshots and in that there was about 40 screenshots which are actually quite interesting because when I got them all together they are telling a story. It is nothing like my painting at the moment. They're all mostly interiors or I mean I'll share them. Can we share them? Like yeah. I'll share them like so you can just see a little collection of what I've been inspired by in the day. Nothing to do with my abstract cloudscapes. Is this a new direction? I don't know. I don't have the time today to get stuck into a massive big juicy painting but I do have the time to look at one of these screenshots, essentially a digital sketchbook. And today might be a sketchbook day for you as well. I just want to do a little transcription of it, a little copy of it, a little doodle around it. And I'd like to invite you to do the same. Have a look at that picture that maybe caught your interest. Get charcoals, a pencil, a pen from your kitchen, uh, some oil paints if you have more time, watercolour, and just on a piece of paper, scrap bit of linen, anything you can find, do a little study of it. Just have a moment to investigate, because that's what I'm going to do now. What about that inspired you for the moment? There was a moment where that image was amused to you. So I want to see, maybe in retrospective, if there's anything in this debris of screenshots that might spark something for a new project. Or maybe it does nothing and I just have a moment of kind of an activity that takes me maybe an hour, maybe 10 minutes. And it just helps me reflect on myself in a way in a very busy day. I don't often now get the luxury of doing. So I have got a piece of paper ready from the sketchbook pages. I have done the masking tape from Tape Square. As you know, a few of you, I love to have like a bit of space and a frame in my sketchbook work when I'm doing quite like messy textural studies. I feel like it just tidies it up. If I want to frame it later, it's always like a lovely effect. Also, it's delicious to pull the masking tape off at the end. 
So the first screenshot I wanted to share was this painting, juicy painting by Jeremy underscore Miranda. Uh, this was just a snapshot. I loved how you had this quite tempestuous, dreary beach, a very simple kind of color palette, quite it's kind of subtle with the tonal variations. But then when you go into the underworld of that glorious turquoise almost, it feels like there's a hidden realm. And it, fa it felt mystical to me, even though it was just a, a kind of study of movement in light and water. But this underworld, the kind of blues, the movement of the seaweed with just simple gestures, it just captivated me. Um, also the reason why I was sort of thinking about this anyway, was today we went to the zoo. And there's a part of the zoo where you're walking through an underground tunnel uh, when you're looking at the seals and sea lions swimming around you and you're underneath them looking up at the sky, kind of sky ahead of you. Um, and I took this photo on my phone. It was actually the only photo I took at the zoo, which of, is of no animals. Um, but I just love how it was resonant of that Jeremy snapshot. And that's kind of what sparked this. I was like, hang on, why does this feel familiar? I love the light captured in the rippling water, the under the kind of the depths of this kind of rich blue. Um, it's a very simple composition. It's mainly a study in light. Uh, this might be a new direction for me, maybe bringing more uh, watery studies back into my practice. I might do this and then not want to do anything more about it. I'm just going to explore. Um, the. So what I'll do is I'll do the quick study of the Jeremy piece and then I will also then do my own study. Um, I don't tend to work from photographs, but with underwater pieces, it's always very recommended because it's very hard to capture under the sea um, with the kind of the way the light changes so much uh, so that's why technology is amazing um so yeah i think we should just get started Oh, for anyone who wants to know, this is just oil paper. Um, if any of you caught last week's episode on the Miracle Mediums, um, I'll be using the Miracle Medium oil paint uh, and the Terps replacement from the solvent-free, plant-based, odourless, non-flammable materials that we explored last week. I'm excited to get to know them better because I'm still learning kind of their personalities and quirks. Um, colours for a really long time. I played, painted exclusively with blue for like five years, maybe longer. It was only in lockdown that I went and tried something different and I used lockdown as an excuse to like branch out. But now I'm kind of ready to return. <laughs> so in my pot I have the Miracle Medium oil paint which is the linseed oil replace, the, re the linseed oil replacement that is um, plant-based and solvent-free. So there's no odour at all, um, but it still acts exactly the same um, as linseed oil, which is really, it's just, it's just, it's a lovely medium to work with. And it's quite fun because I'm kind of getting to know the personality of these new mediums. So I'm maybe more tentative about how I'm painting as well. Um, might just, whenever I do like really sharp lines, I feel like frog tape is the kind of like cheat. Okay, this is probably the wrong colour, but for, for the sake of just inquiry, we'll... It's kind of like the best way to learn if you're interested in something, is to, is to investigate it. And I think for me, my brain works if I just observe something. I think about that in Florence from like the bards, when you're just copying these like images and you kind of, in that action, you learn what it is about it that appeals to you. I've done this exercise before with um, Arnold Bocklin's Isle of the Dead, which was an amazing video for me because in 
recreating a painting which I adore I got to like lose my mind into the kind of structure composition and a kind of the artist's world um, and it just kind of got me thinking about the work I was engaging with in a different way I'm kind of hoping that this will do the same The main colour I'm using for this is Caribbean turquoise, my carding's Caribbean turquoise, with a little bit of cobalt teal, and then just lightening that up with white or darkening it down with a bit of raw umber. So this isn't me trying to copy this lovely artist's painting. He's made the perfect painting. Uh, if I wanted to own it, I would buy it from him if it was available. Uh, I'm kind of working from it to better understand my reaction to it. Um, when I finished this sketch, um, I'll probably get rid of the image um, just as a mark of respect to the artist or put it in a drawer and never let it see the light of day again, unless it's in a, so the sketchbook as reference. Uh, really, I think it's the kind of split world of these kind of above ground, below water. Um, maybe the energy you feel above is so different below. Maybe this, this the hidden world beneath things is something that I'm intrigued by. This, uh, there's a, there's another layer, like another layer, another sub context to what is just essentially a landscape painting. There's so much more beneath this piece. Um, it's like a fragmented world and. Uh, I might just kind of go back into the artist's profile, research a bit, visit their website, just investigate his practice, um, just because I really admire it. Um, again, this isn't trying to copy it perfectly. I, it, it's a very sloppy attempt. Uh, I'm finding that I didn't mix. I should have spent more time mixing this lovely, beautiful turquoise. I just slapped on a light blue because I just wanted to get stuck in. Uh, but already I feel like I'm enjoying the use of line more that my work's been quite uh, smoky and flat, very airbrushed. I quite like the kind of texture. There's a lot of evidence of brush mark and like what looks to me like palette knife work. Maybe I could bring that, maybe it's the material aspect of it as well, the aesthetic that I want to kind of like bring more into the new work. Um, I'll just do the painting courtesy and kind of finish the top quickly. Um, but I've kind of, I think I've kind of, understood more about what I'm intrigued by. I want my work to maybe show more about what's beneath it. Um, not just give you the perfect kind of image, the, the framed landscape or painting. I'd like to maybe be more transparent about what's hidden beneath um, the work. We only see like a little bit of what's on the surface. It's like icebergs, isn't it? The main mass of an iceberg is beneath the water. I think it does. The artist has obviously done the same thing, working from that like crisp edge.
just kind of rip, but it doesn't matter. Okay, so really quick sketch. What I got from it is it's all about edges for me. The light hitting a surface, the depth of texture that you get from different kind of parts of the kind of rock to water to light. There's a lot more elements to this painting than I've been working with in my own work. I think that's what I'm touching on. So what I'll do next is um, do my own study of kind of light hitting the different texture of the cliff surface with the light streaming through the water. Um, it's not, it's successful. It's not my fight, it's just a sketch, but it's it's helped me step closer to uh, what I'm interested in, which is apparently more edges, more texture, more visceral surface, um, also leaving some more of the uh, brush strokes and palette knife marks visible to uh, use for the eye as a kind of way into a work, uh, less smoking of all the kind of brush strokes so everything's really smooth. I found this kind of a really juicy, fun, uh, piece to work from. So moving forward I'm going to keep this little project going, going through anything I've gathered and collected and starting to bring it up to the surface, uh, refreshing all the elements of what I was intrigued about it in the casual moments of my day and see what that leads me to in my painting practice. Um, I'll hopefully find time to also do some more painting from the recent photographs I have which connect this piece um, or I could just leave this in a drawer for a while, it was just an exercise but I'm feeling very energized which is what I wanted I was feeling quite ugh, like tired and slumpy before I started so this is good um do please like and subscribe to this channel it really helps us grow and gives me confidence to keep making more videos if any of you do find this exercise helpful and you end up going and doing something similar I would love to see so please do send that through to us on Instagram at Jess Oliver Art um any comments below always really appreciate as well um just to kind of engage with you any questions you have about um, my life as an artist or anything we've brought up in today's session just talking about social media and if it weighs on you or if you feel the pressure to keep constantly having a trajectory with your practice of more likes more subscribers more success more followers um, and maybe just opening up the conversation of the pressure that puts us under an imposter syndrome as artists or is this not any good because I don't have enough likes that sparks something um, in you as well it'd be great to like talk about it and like maybe open a dialogue with all of us just to um make us realize that we're all in the same kind of bubble uh, and actually uh, talking about it makes it feel less of a thing uh, which already i feel much better about it talking to you now um so thank you so much for watching uh, i will see you next week um yeah thanks very much guys bye